What's up guys, welcome into the weekly recap video with the wheel strategy. In this video, I'm gonna be going over the week as a whole with the market, the S&P 500. We'll look at the chart, we'll see how, how it moved this week. We'll talk about any type of significant economic data. Jerome Powell spoke this week, so we'll, we'll touch on that a little bit and just look at the market as a whole. And then we'll wrap up the video looking at the wheel strategy, how that's been going, my uh, my new rules in motion, I have new positions going on. So I'll, I'll give you guys a recap there, how that went and give you guys the, the total profits. I mean, you can see in the title of the video, got over $180 on the week, so that's great. Uh, but we'll dive into that in more detail a little bit later. But first, we're going to start with the S&P 500. So this is big. This is a big deal. Um, a lot changes in between videos here. I mean, I made my last video on Wednesday, and two days later, 100 points later in the uh, in SPX, here we are now at the pivot low that we just made earlier in October when we got down to just about 4,200, a level I've been calling out for a while. And, you know, with this bullish trend line here and the bounce that we had out of it, out of the 4,200 area, off this line, or, or you know, around the line, I thought, you know, maybe we're due for another leg higher. Looking at the chart, not factoring in macro stuff, it looked like we had a nice 50% retracement, bounced off of this bullish line, we held it, we pushed up. This might be a new bullish leg towards uh, a new high. But sometimes fundamentals in the macro economy do matter. And there's not a lot great going on right now. We got a new war in Israel and we have... Uh, you know, banks reporting, forecasting a bad outlook for the future. I mean, really nothing new, but sometimes, you know, it takes the markets a little while to, to get on board. The market can be irrational longer than you can be solvent. A lot of this has to do with bond yields too. So if we look at like the 10-year the treasury yield, this thing has uh, spiked up a lot. And usually when, when yields start to rise, that's when the, the markets can, can really get beaten down. And this is exactly what we're seeing here. The two-year treasury yield uh, had a spike up, pulled back these last two days, but the 10-year is really the big one. This thing's just been on a tear. And when the long end of the yield curve starts to go up like this, it usually signifies that, you know, investors, bond investors, they are expecting inflation and, and rates to be higher than, for longer, longer than they expected. Because this is 10 years out. You know, like these are, this is the yield on a treasury that's, that has a 10 year maturity and it's paying 5%. Before it was paying 4% just a couple months ago, but rates right now are at 5%, five and a quarter percent. So why would you take 4% for 10 years if you could get 5% right now? Well, the idea is over the course of those 10 years, rates will come down and the majority of that term, 4% will end up looking better than the average rate over the 10 years. So they're expecting, yeah, it's 5% right now, but over the next couple of years, it'll come back down to like 2% and uh, the 4% yield I'm getting for 10 years will actually look a lot better in the long run. Well, when the yield starts to go up to 5% now, that's saying, well, you know, maybe rates won't come down as soon as we thought. Therefore, I need a higher yield for, uh, for a 10 year bond here. So that's kind of the reasoning behind why yields going up might mean inflation and interest rates will be higher for longer. So we'll go back to SPX. Here we are selling off, cracked this, this bullish trend line again, approaching the low. I mean, we are right at this pivot low. So, I mean, now what I'm seeing here is a downtrend. You move lower, pops back up, but a lower high, a move lower, a lower low pop up, lower high, coming back down. What would really confirm this trend is if we make a lower low, that's the next step. And we're like 98, 99% of the way there. The last step was a lower high, which was right here. And the, the next step would be a lower low, which would be right you know, here, anything from here down. And we're just about right there. So 98, 99% of this next step has been done. All we need is just to move a little bit lower, crack this low, which we're already at, and bang, you have a, a continuation of the downtrend. This green zone here is what I would expect to be some pretty significant support because it was pretty significant resistance 
in the past. I mean, even if you stretch this out all the way back here, back into 2022, you can see just how much this 4200 area, 4100 to 4200, it's a big range, a 100 point range about. You can see how much significance it had. It was resistance for a while um, over here, and then we broke out of it here, but came back down, and then we rejected here. We, we uh, moved sideways a little bit here, but came down. Took forever to get out of it in this patch. I mean, we were in this range for a month straight before we finally broke out. Um, and now we're coming back to it, but from the upside, looking for it to act as support. And I do think it would be support. I don't think we're going to cut through this area quickly. You never know. But I would expect this area to hold up as some support. But what does that mean? Does that just mean we go sideways or do we actually get a bounce? We could just kind of go sideways here as opposed to just going straight back up. So um, just something to watch out for, I guess. But we're not, that, we're not too far from there. Another 30 points, I would expect... You know, a little bit of a bounce, maybe a green day or two out of this re region before the market decides how much it wants to sell off. So that's what we're looking at here. A pretty ugly week all in all. If we go to the weekly chart, I didn't mean to delete that green zone, but it happened by accident. Down 2.39% on the week. Not good. So next week's going to be big. And we have more earnings coming up too. It's earnings season. So uh, that could only add to the spiral if companies start missing and forecasting lower guidance and whatnot and in weaker consumer. That's only going to add to this. So be careful. These are dangerous times right now. This could, this could spiral quickly. But then again, sentiment can change at the drop of a hat. So just take every day with a grain of salt and, and just do one day, one trade at a time. With that being said, let's get into the wheel strategy. So we'll throw the graphic on the screen. Uh, October profits up to $348, and we still have another week to go. So we'll add to that. So we're shaping up to be a decent month. Uh, year to date profits is actually a loss of $938. So the goal is to get that loss out of here and hopefully make it a gain. I still have November and December and a little bit of October left to go. I'm pretty confident that I can, I can, I can tack that down to, to zero dollars or green on the year uh, with two months to go. Maybe the average like four to five hundred dollars a month. I think that's very possible. We can get that down. That that loss wiped away. But for now, we're just chipping away one week at a time. So let's get into it. I mean, uh, we're we're holding some shares. I sold some puts. Let's see how it all went. So we're gonna start with GM, the first position I really got in. So, uh, all right, here we go. GM, we'll go to the hourly chart here just to show you kind of how the week went. So Monday was here. So this was the week. This was what GM did this week. I mean, it opened right about here. It closed right about here. So kind of a flat week. It went up, it went down, it came back up. Overall, relatively flat, which can be good for the wheel. But in this case, it's a little too far under my cost basis. So I'm not able to sell calls. So I don't want this thing to go sideways. I want it to go up. So I can sell a call against it. So this week I did absolutely nothing with GM. I just let it do its thing and it didn't really do too much. But um, my position is 100 shares at $32. My break even is at 31.62. And we are at 29.66 or 29.85 after hours. Uh, but I don't always trust after hours. Go to the daily chart. You know, I was playing this range. It's clear support right here and it broke it. And now we're kind of struggling down here. We're not too far underwater yet, just a couple dollars, but that's kind of been the case the last couple of weeks. A little, unfortunately, a little too far away to sell calls. Now, GM has earnings next week. It reports Tuesday morning. So that means the options chain for next week will be inflated. The IV will be high because of earnings. So you would think I'd be able to sell a nice call because I'd get that inflated premium for earnings. But unfortunately, it's not quite there. I need GM to rally a little bit just to get the 32 strike, which is my break even. Uh, and I'm fine with selling a call at break even, but I need to make sure I get enough premium. And it's just it's just short right now. It reports on Tuesday. So I'm hoping Monday we get a little bit of a rally, maybe in, in, in anticipation of earnings, hopefully, but any rally of some kind would be great. And then from there, I would expect I'd be able to sell a call with the inflated premium in preparation for earnings. But if not, then oh well, I won't be able to sell a call, but that could also work out for me because who knows, if GM goes crazy to the upside after earnings, I won't have a call sold capping my upside, therefore I'll be able to, to benefit completely to the fullest extent. 
but we will see. That's a, that's a story for next week. So nothing happening from GM there, but let's go to CSIQ, Canadian Solar. Go to the hourly chart here. Uh, the week is this section right here. So I had a down week. I think it fell about 7%. There was a another solar company that reported earnings or, or preliminary earnings. Uh, they gave a little bit of a statement ahead of their earnings release. They did that today or last night. And that company, I think it's Solar Edge. Let me just go to that. Uh, Solar Edge. Here we go. Solar Edge Technologies dropped 27%. This is the uh, hourly chart. Let's go to the daily so you can see the gap. So this forecasted some uh, pullback in demand for solar panels, which makes sense. I think they, they were talking about some cancellations that they had. Um, you know, solar, solar panels can be expensive. They're generally financed. And the hope is that the, the credit you get from the solar energy that you collect will pay for the loan and you net net don't have to pay anything out of pocket. But with high interest rates, the financing on the loan, it's going to be an expensive payment. The solar might not be enough to make that payment. People just, you know, the bu budgets are tight as it is. People are just staying away from it. So with rates as high as they are, it's not really great for solar which this has been suffering for a little bit, but then they released some comments bringing this thing way down 27%. So CSIQ, the company I'm in, felt the effect of that, dropped a little bit. It fell 5% today. Uh, it's at $20.67. I'm in at $22. So I have 200 shares at 22 bucks. My break even is 21.39. So we're not really, we're not far underwater at all. Um, so I'm not too worried about where it is now. And the good news with this is that I've been able to sell calls this whole time. So this week I had calls sold for this Friday. I had two calls because I have 200 shares and I sold them for 46 cents each. So that's a good credit. And on Thursday, right here, we dipped down a bit. So we'll go down to the 15 minute so I can show you how uh, we moved a little, you know, we moved down on, on Thursday as low as $21. So the week started here and we got all the way down here and at this point my calls decayed enough for me to exit at 90 percent profit that's my rule if i can close my calls or puts my sold options if i can close them for 90 percent of the total premium collected before expiration day that's what i'm going to do and that happened on thursday csiq dipped a little bit new low on the week and the the calls decayed and i closed them so I closed them for five cents, which is 90%, just about 90%. And with two calls, it ended up being a net profit of $83 on those calls. Cool. So that was on Thursday. I closed them right about here. I got filled. CSIQ popped later that afternoon, and I used that opportunity to sell a new round of calls for next week. Still at the 23 strike, which is above my break even or my cost basis of $22 per share. So my calls aren't at break even for, you know, no capital gains. They're they're above my break even. They're above my cost basis. So I am in profit territory, which is great. That's phenomenal. That's ideal. And I got great credit for it. So with a position of $22 per share, the credit I needed on this Thursday for next Friday, the credit that was required was 18 cents to sell a call on a Thursday for the next Friday, I would, would have required 17 cents and I got 30 cents. So I was able to sell calls for next Friday for 30 cents, which is phenomenal premium, well above my 30% annualized target. And that's locked in. So CSIQ for next week is good. It's working for me. The worst part about the wheel or a wheeled position is not being able to sell calls like GM. So my GM position, I didn't sell any calls on it this week. So this was not doing anything for me this week. GM was not working for me because I had no, no positions, no, no options sold against it. CSIQ, although also not doing very well, was working for me. And I profited on calls for it this week. And I have calls for it next week, which means next week is going to be working for me too. So that's great. The chart might not look the greatest at this very moment, but it's still working for me. And as long as I can make these positions work for me every week, then I don't really care what they do, right? So looking all right there. Next, we got Kraft Heinz. So this one, I have 100 shares at $32 per share. This week is right here. So this was the current week. We opened here. 
we closed here a relatively flat week, which is okay. I'm fine with that. I was able to sell a call at the 32 strike, which is my cost basis. Based on the cost of the position and me selling a call against it this past Monday, I was required to get 18 cents minimum for the covered call. I got 25 cents for it at the 32 strike. It did not close above 32, although it came close. On, on Wednesday, we got above $32. My call was in the money. My shares were in profit territory, but then it came back down. And I didn't close these early. It didn't give me the opportunity to. And I let them expire worthless and kept the full premium of $25. That brings my break even down to 3164 and we're looking all right. I'll, I'll see if I can sell calls against it first thing on Monday. That does it for positions that I'm holding. Let's see what happened with my cash secured put plays. So we'll go to Charles Schwab. Uh, they reported this week to start the week. They had a nice 5% rally just about, but then they rolled over this week uh, after that earnings. So this, this is the whole week for Schwab. They had this massive pop but then they began to roll over. It was actually on this rollover on Wednesday when it got down to $52 per share. I decided to sell a put against it for this week with only a few days left at expiration at the $50 strike way down here. And if I go to the daily chart, you might see why I would play that. It was, I mean, it was support recently, just a few weeks ago, $50. If you go way back here, it's, it's, in, it's generally in the support zone, the demand zone for Schwab, even after this massive drop from the March banking crisis. $50 is about, you know, how as far down as it goes. Technically, the low is 45 bucks, but it really hasn't stayed down there long. I would say $50, anything 50 or less is, uh, is the support zone. So I'm, I'm happy getting it in at 50. So I sold the put there on Wednesday. It did not get assigned. It expired worthless and I kept all the premium. I received 17 bucks, so that was the profit, $17. And what's interesting and what's great about selling options is I sold it here at $52. Or when, when Schwab was trading at 52 bucks, that's when I sold the put. And when you sell puts, you know generally you want the stock to go up that way, that way your put decays and goes worthless and you keep all the premium. Now, Schwab actually moved against me. It went lower, down to $51, under $51 actually. So it went against me, but I still won on the trade because selling out of the money options gives you a little bit of a buffer. And, uh, and that buffer was big enough for me to win on the trade, even though it went against me. So that's the beauty of selling options. If it goes up, well, for a song of put, if it goes up, you win. If it goes sideways or stays flat, you win. And if it goes against you just a little bit, you can still win. So that's great. $17 there on Schwab. And because it's lower now than it was when I originally sold this option, that means for next week, I should be able to play it again. I should be able to run this back and maybe even at a better strike because we're lower than we were earlier in the week. So... Um, I'll likely play this one again first thing next week. So the last name we got to go over is Devon Energy. This one I actually played twice this week. So we got to go over that, the first one earlier in the week. So here's the daily chart. I was playing the 4750 strike, which you can see is right around the area of support that it's been trading at for the last few months, really most of the year since, since March. It's been hanging around here. And although it did dip below this area and got as far down as like 43 bucks, that was very brief. It went, it spiked down, it spiked right back up and kind of holding this main area of support more so than, uh, than way down here. So now that it's reclaimed above this, this main area of support, it seems like that's the new, or it's resuming as the active support as opposed to way down here at 43 bucks. So I'm happy getting in around here, 47.50, 47, lower than that is fine too. That's even better. Um, so that's what I played this week. So we'll go to the hourly chart, zoom in a bit here. The current week is this zone right here. So this is all of this week. Monday, we started here and I sold the put at 47.50. I sold the contract for 28 cents and Devon Energy rallied in the next few days. Went all the way up to $50.83. So it rallied over $2 a share. And that allowed me to get out of my put. It allowed me to close it for about 90% profit, 90% of the total premium. So I, I sold it for 28 cents. I bought it back for three cents and profited $25. Great. Now, after I closed it up here at the peak, it came down a little bit that day. 
And then it gapped down even further the next day and got down to $48.50. So it sold off two whole dollars per share after I got out of my, my cash gear put right back down to where it really started the week, even lower than where it started the week. And that allowed me to sell the same exact put all over again. So when, when Devon Energy dropped around here on Thursday, I sold the 47.50 put again, and I got 11 cents. Now, selling a, an option on Thursday, a put option on Thursday, is only two days to expiration. So to get 30% annualized, it requires even less premium because it's really only a two-day trade. So for a uh, stock of $47.50 with only two days to expiration, I was required to get a minimum of 11 cents, and that's exactly what I got. I threw the limit order out there. I ended up getting filled, which was great, and ended up popping up later that day. And then today it rolled over, actually made new lows on the week, but just like Schwab, even though it went against me, I was still able to win on the trade and it expired worthless and I kept the full $11 as profit. And again, like Schwab, this is now lower than it was when I originally got into the trade over here, which means it's set up to be played again next week. So I'm probably going to play Schwab and Devon Energy all over again next week, hopefully, and maybe probably, I haven't looked at the options chain yet, but at better strikes. Maybe I'll be able to get the 47 strike instead of the 4750 with Devon Energy. And with Schwab, maybe I'll be able to get the 4950 strike as opposed to the $50 strike. So that's even better. I'd love to get these names. If I was happy buying them at 50, I'll be even happier buying them at 4950. So here's a quick snapshot of my month of October. The current week is this stuff right here. This activity was all this week and it amounted to a total of $184 in profit, which is awesome. I have $348 on the month, 1.38% return on the month, and we're not done yet. In fact, I actually have uh, $60, let's bring that back here, uh, already in the pipeline for next week in the form of CSIQ covered calls. Here's CSIQ. I have two covered calls sold, 30 cents each. That's a total of $60 in premium that I stand to collect next week. So we're already starting with $60 for next week. I plan to sell two more cash secured puts next week, maybe even a covered call on Kraft Heinz next week. So there's a real chance I can get over a hundred bucks again next week and bring my totals up to close to $500 on the month of October. So that's the game plan. And that was the weekly recap. So thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed, be sure to hit that like button. Please leave a comment down below. I like engaging with you guys and helps the channel as well. Enjoy your weekend. And as always guys, I will see you all next time.